We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Good Monday morning to you. The American Girl is here with Tom Petty. Well, he's not really here. But I'm Marsha Witeka, and you are listening to the Born to Talk radio show, where conversation plus connection equals community. And what, what else besides that is what's your story? And today, wow, this is going to be the most unique show I have ever done, because in studio with me is the wonderful, magnificent Melissa Mayo. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Marcia. Thank you for having me in the studio. <laughs> this is, I have to tell you how this worked out. For those of you that have been following my show for, for over two years now, um, if you do Facebook, as I do, and many of you do, you'll get memories that will show up that says, you know, a year ago, three years ago, blah, blah, blah. And a couple of weeks ago, what came up on Melissa's memory was the show that she and I did last year when she was my guest and we were talking about Passover and we were talking about her book and we were talking about Hans Zimmer and we were talking about food. It was so fabulous. So she called me to say, Marsha, I just watched the show and it was really good. And I said, would you like to come back? And she said, well, yes, I would. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, what she said next was, but I want to do it a little different. I said, what do you mean? She said, I want to interview you. I said, what? She says, yeah, you've just been to Africa. Where am I from? You give me, Marcia was like, you give me your questions, Marcia. You pick out your music. You pick out your, fix your pictures. Oh, poor Richard. And let's do a show about where I'm from. And I said, I'm in. So that's what this show was all about today. So it sounds like I've turned the tables slightly. So I'm now a broadcast yes, radio you host, are. and you are my guest. Well, thanks How for having me. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me have you on your show. <laughs> what a concept. Oh my gosh, this is great. So where should we start, my host friend? Well, Marsha, we met, but what I really wanted to give your audience, because you're always asking the questions, you're always asking them uh, about themselves and the content of the show, but um, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Marsha Waiteka. Marsha Waiteka. Well, you're, we're in the studio that, uh, in, my, in the community that I grew up in. I was raised in Westchester, and that's where we're sitting. We're sitting in a movie theater that I used to come to when I was a teenager, all right? And I lived here my entire life until I moved out of the house when I was 19 and moved to a community not far from here. And there was this guy that was driving this brand new convertible yellow <laughs> MGC that lived in the same building. And I was like, oh, I wonder who that is. I had just been dating the same boy because we were boys and girls in those days in high school. For three years, we broke up. And now I was, you know, available. And I thought, oh, this guy's, look at his car. <laughs> I guess he was cute. I was, first it was the car. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, as I'd come up the stairs, because we, I had to go past his place to get to my place, it was like, what smells so good in there? Because the door was always open. And then it was like, well, you girls want to come he down. He was waiting for you to come inside. Exactly. <laughs> and, I was, and I was happy to accommodate him. So th we started. Um, he started cooking, and we'd go down there for dinner, and then he ended up meeting every boy or young man that I dated, and sometimes they stayed at his house, and blah, 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 and then that went away, and then it was like, oh, oh, maybe we should start dating. I'm sure that was my idea. I can assure you that was my idea. I don't know. It sounded like with all the food and the cooking and the door <laughs> open, <laughs> well, and he maybe. was luring you in. <laughs> maybe so. Uh, oh, you I, know, I, they say the way to a man's heart is through the stomach, but that still applies for women yes, too. I guess it so does. he was like roping, roping you in, in, I think. And it's so funny. So we both were working for the same company. He was from Detroit, came out here um, when he graduated, worked for Hughes Aircraft. I also then was working for Hughes Aircraft. And just one thing led to another, and then it was like, are we ever going to get married? <laughs> I, I'm sure that I proposed. It was like, come on now, are we getting married or are we not getting married? So it's like, okay, fine. So we got married. You and were we ahead of your time. Well, Russia. you know, I was like, come on already. <laughs> so we got married in um, May 8th, 1971. Wow. And he continued to work for Hughes Aircraft his entire life. We, we 
moved from apartment and bought a home in Westchester. Now we're back in Westchester, started our family. I left Hughes Aircraft. I was one of those stay-at-home moms, and then I was the PTA lady and the Cub Scout lady oh, yeah, yeah. and all of that stuff. Girl Scouts, I did it all. I was it's that volunteer. It was a full-time job. It was a full-time job. I loved it. The kids, I had, I have, we have two children. My, my, my son will be turning 43 next month. My daughter just turned 40. My son is getting married. Oh, congratulations. My son is getting That's married fabulous. at the end of this week, as a matter of fact, in Tucson wow. on July the 1st. So, yes, it's a big deal. Fantastic. Thank you. And, like, yes, it's, it's really exciting. My daughter is married also. Anyway, so... To fast forward this. You look very relaxed for someone who's got a wedding going on right now Thank at the you. moment. Well, you don't know how my heart's beating. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so to, to shorten this up a little bit. So uh, something very dramatic happened in my life um, that was most unfortunate. And that was um, my husband retired, and that was very fortunate. And we were living the life of a retired couple prepared to do that. And... He had gone to Florida to be with his fraternity brothers, smoke cigars, drink some scotch, play some poker, came home, and then it was time for the Pac-10 basketball tournament. We went on a, a Wednesday um, evening, and then Thursday morning we went out for breakfast on our way back to the Staples Center to watch four games. Arizona, which is where my son works, was playing the Arizona, St uh, Arizona State and unfortunately and sad to say, my husband sat down and died at the Staples Center. And it was, oh, not ex it was certainly nothing we saw coming. It was called sudden cardiac arrest. And it changed my life, obviously. We were together were. 40 years. My children were obviously also equally devastated. So it was... I can't even begin to imagine it was it was rough it was really rough but i would say this to anyone that might be listening right now about that part of my life is that um i was a really vocal one in the family he was the rock i was the mouthpiece and living here my whole life working at the y for 10 years being very involved in this community i was a missus i was a wife i was a mother i still am a mother but I was also Marsha, and I think being able to have an identity that didn't define myself by being Butch's wife, but also Marsha as well, really made a difference for, for me recovering from where I needed to go next, because clearly that's what happened. I needed to move so on with my life. So you found the next chapter as part of your healing. I did. You found the show, your own voice, your own identity, that, that was part of your healing? Well, it's interesting how the show started, because Butch and I were, were sp original Sparks season ticket holders. That's the WNBA season, the champions of last year. We're in our 22nd season, I believe. And we went to the Staples Center and we sat with all of our friends there. And I needed to let them know that no longer was he going to be joining me. Obviously, this was a big shock for them as well. And a very good friend of mine who's a widow said to me, and this is the advice I would give to anyone else that's listening. She said, never say no to an invitation. And I thought, really? So if somebody asks you to go do something, yes. don't say, well, yes, I don't yes, do that yes. on I'm Thursday. very big about yes. Yeah. Always say yes. Just yes say is, yes. Yes is, if the answer, question is how, the answer is yes. Exactly. Well, I learned that. And that's ultimately how this whole radio show started because I said yes to that. And my friend Deb came for dinner with a bunch of my Sparks friends. And she said, I think I've got a place for you to land right here with Richard. And that's how this whole thing started two years ago. And Butch is watching you every single episode, and yes. he's so proud of you. Ah, uh, thanks. And now we're going to be talking about Africa, which is why we're going out to this song, Toto. So stay tuned, everybody, because now we're going to go to um, Out of Africa with Melissa and Marsha. We'll be right back. The moonlit wings reflect the stars that guide me towards salvation. Stopped an old man along the way Hoping to find some old forgotten words Or ancient melodies He turned to 
We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and hosts of LA Talk Live are like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hi, this is Marsha Waiteka inviting you to join me every Monday at 1 p.m. for Born to Talk, where conversation plus connections equal community. Be sure to tune in to Born to Talk with Marsha Waiteka, Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also listen live at iTunes Radio R&B, TuneIn Radio, Radio Flag, Live 365, or AHA Radio. This is Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. We are L.A. Talk Live, and we are born to talk. Hi, everybody. I'm going to be quiet for just a couple of seconds. I should be glad when the song plays. It should be. Dead. Oh, God, this could make me cry. Don't you want to it have It does make me cry. It actually makes me cry, the song. Oh, my. The very heart. Oh, it makes me, makes me want to have a drum, too. It's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. If you have a chance to go to Africa. Oh my goodness! Don't say, don't say no. That Just is a say death yes. say yes. yes. So that was the Soweto Gospel Choir, and how do you say the name of the song? Shosha Loza. That's how you say it. I, you don't want me to say it. All right. So we have to talk about Africa. I need to tell the our listeners how it is that I even went to Africa. I didn't go there on a vacation, although certainly. I wasn't really working, working. My very good friend, Shelly Wells, works for Loyola Marymount University. And her program office is the EMBA, Executive MBA program. And this was the EMBA 16 class of students. I think there were 23 of them. And they, along with the director, his wife, one of the professors, no, his, not his wife, his daughter, professor and, her, and his wife, we all went to Africa together for the, with the purposes of them studying the wine industry. Well, that's a good place to start in South Africa, isn't it? No, no kidding. <laughs> that was their, Why their, not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> so I want to also do a shout out at this point. I have ha I've been so blessed. The reason that I even know about you is because of our mutual friends, Robin and Stella Mountain Correct. from Nataba. And I learned about them through a classmate from junior high school. His wife represents them in the U.S. It's a connection. It's it's all about connection. And they also have a wonderful, wonderful company called The Taste of Africa, which is where I grab all the South African products I cannot find right. um, in the U.S. And they ship throughout the States. So, yeah, they are... Uh, Remarkable. So they Phenomenal. So the Nataba, the, so the Nataba group, Nataba African Safaris. If you're thinking about going on a safari, just type. And Nataba is spelled N-T-A-B-A. -A, just type it up. Or Robin Mountain. Nataba means mountain in Swahili. Anyway, so they they arranged for us to have a tour the first day, and um, that was my first our first glimpse into Africa. So where did you go? What did you see? Did you go to Cape Town? Yes. Tell me a little bit about what you saw. So we, we after we got there, and yes, it does take a while. Be patient. But once 30 we hours, door to door. It's a while. <laughs> premium economy, I highly recommend it. Knees around because the neck. You know why premium economy? <laughs> economy? Because they serve this drink called Amarula. Amarula, that's correct. It's from the Amarula tree. It's oh man, <laughs> if you go premium economy. They just pour it the whole time. It's just fabulous. South Africans yeah. pour alcohol oh, a lot the whole time. But you know, <laughs> I love that. So we they they arranged for Des. And then what I want to get Des's last name. Where is Des Blackhurst? Okay. So Des Blackhurst picked us up. I came with a suitcase full of bras because yes. they do the zebra promotion exactly. and. Be, the generosity of my good friend, and I mention him all the time, um, Russell uh, from uh, Share Hope USA, they got together and got all of these bras. One of my friends, Maggie, gave me a suitcase, and I took it with me, and I delivered it, and it went to the village How women. How wonderful. Oh, the, you know, generosity started the moment I walked into that, to that hotel. So to tell you a funny, well, it's not really a funny story, but when my mom passed away shortly after she, she did, um, 
we also had a lot of stuff around the house and when um, there was a flood and they came to take two trucks to the townships and they shared the photos with me of these people receiving it. That's a thing. Is it's it's not only that you're giving it, but the gratitude at being oh, received. No you changed these women's days. Just a simple bra made. It was. It just. It, you know. It's. You're so right about what you're saying. And it was the the handing over of that suitcase. It was very emotional. I found the whole trip to be emotional. You know, we have coastline here on the coast. You know, we 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 have cliffs. We have water. Blah blah blah. When I found out we were going to see penguins, let me just tell you, I thought penguins are in Antarctica or the zoo or you know the San Diego Zoo maybe. I had no idea we were going to see them in this habitat. So we went to Boulders. Yes, Boulders Beach. Boulders Beach and there were all these penguins just like running around just doing their penguin thing and you could they were they were at the beach and they were it's like little tuxedos <laughs> just chilling they were just just running around. Did you get to Cape uh, to Table Mountain? We did go to Table Mountain and it's what we could see that from our hotel in fact you could see sometimes the cloud cover was just like hanging on it and a very interesting thing happened. The day we were the Sunday that we were sort of starting our 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 class time there were 35,000 cyclists in Cape it's Town. August. They, but it was canceled wasn't it? It was canceled because the wind velocity was so strong, they were blowing people off, off of their the bicycles. Cliffs and off the so they, 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 nobody got injured because they could see wow. that this was so awful. So all of these people from all over the world Come were in Cape Town. the August race, yes. yes. But it wasn't August, though, because it, it, it was in March. But I don't I know think if... it is. I it's don't the know August, what the... August, the Cape August. Is that what it's called, the Cape August? Argus. Oh, it's Argus. The Argus. Oh, the I'm sorry, she has an accent. Sorry, you know it's this? my accent, where, yeah. where, 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 where are you from? <laughs> South Africa. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not that. It's like the south part of Africa. No, no, that's actually it's a country. At the tip of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, you don't even want to know how stupid I was before I took it this trip. Oh, Marsha, you're not stupid. So tell me what okay. what did you see? So you you went up Cape. You saw Table Mountain. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see Cape Point where the yes the, the we two went oceans to, meet? We did. We went to Cape Point. We saw that. Isn't it magical, the green and the blue water? Oh. How they don't touch? Oh, it's because the temperature's different. Oh, it's just incredible. On the way there, there was a fire in an informal township. And informal townships, if you can imagine, are just, informal is not really the word that w would come to my mind, but imagine corrugated metal. Shanties. They're shanties. They're, they're, they, are, they are really poverty. And they're, they're bolted together. And that's where people live. Well, if a fire comes through, you can just imagine what happens. Well, that that that's the township that I was saying that we donated to mm -hmm. uh, was um, washed away in the flood. Mm -hmm. So um, they lost everything. Right. Everything just floated downstream. downstream. Um, and it can unfortunately happen. Nothing's bolted down and mm -hmm. rain, flood, natural disasters just leave these people starting over. Absolutely. But so we the funny thing yes. is, I don't know if you found this about South Africans, no matter how empty the glass is or no matter how dire their circumstances are, they have joy and hope that comes from the inside. They are the happiest and most joyful, um, passionate people. I would agree, it and I've been a lot of places. from their inside their, their, their energy and their soul. It's just incredible. So speaking of that, I, I hope for those of you that are listening that you might consider going back at, at your convenience. Go to my website, www.borntotalkradioshow.com. Dot com. I'm so excited about talking about Africa. I can't remember my show. <laughs> and you'll see an archive there of the show so you can watch it because this is a very visual show. You can't go to Africa and not make it visual. No. So for those of you that are currently watching, you might see that there's some things that are on the table. And they're significant to me and they're significant in what I want to tell you about. And that is Des took us to meet Jill Hayes. And Jill Hayes is a woman that was from the UK. She and her husband moved to South Africa to Hot Bay, Cape Town, okay. the Cape Town Point. And she was an educator. And when she came to South Africa, she couldn't get a job as an educator. But she was very concerned about the poverty and the lack of education, particularly for women. And what she ended up doing 
it's such a remarkable story. I, I really suggest that you go and just go to her teabagdesigns.com co.za it's not dot com the way we do it here in the states no, it's when and we say dot z a yeah so co dot z a <laughs> yeah so it's yeah but we don't know how to say that so it's spelled <laughs> co dot z a anyway <laughs> check her out because what you're seeing in front of you is the is the enterprise that she started and we were invited into her That's studio fantastic. all of this is made with decoupaged tea bag wow tea bag paper some of the people that work with her lost their homes in that fire the, the day prior. What you're looking at is paper where they've taken the tea bags. They, people have their tea. They put it aside. They finish their tea. The tea, tea bag is brown. You're done. Instead of just tossing it, they're having people throw away the tea, smooth out the paper, and get it to them. A Boy Scout in Indiana sent, sent her 10,000 sheets of, of tea, tea bag wow. the, the paper she'll take the she'll take the uh, little plastic part of it or whatever she'll take it all and then what they do is they make art so this is a bird i'm a bird person god knows so this is a bird but what i love about this is this is they have greeting cards once filled with tea now filled with love but this is also such an amazing thing. This is a quote that she found. A woman is like a tea bag. You never know how strong she'll be until you put her in hot water. <laughs> is that fabulous? fabulous? That's so fabulous. I was, and I, I, I was just taken. But did you not see, in general, South African art is all made of recycled stuff. I oh, have seen no kidding. From bottle caps to cans to safety belts to tires, they will find, to plastic bottles, there are huge installations where they find other people's trash. And you they are such a creative, artistic culture. Right. That what we consider recyclable trash, they, see. they turn into masterpieces. Exactly. So it's a way to feed their families. So they take what they can find and turn it in. They're resourceful. They're very. They're resourceful. And they're, and, and they're uh, very willing to negotiate. <laughs> of course. In you fact, have to negotiate. You have to negotiate. I feel like uh, I just felt like, uh, what's his you name? You always William have Shatner. to negotiate. One of the <laughs> other things we did is on that same day, we went to this botanical gardens called the Kirstenbosch. Kirstenbosch, yeah. That was just uh, spectacular too. That was my first, so the gardens are beautiful, and, right? And you are an avid bird oh, photographer. God, okay, so everything. you love to take pictures of birds and nature and animals. So you must have just been in heaven. How many pictures did oh you actually take when God. you were there? Was really? there even room in I, your camera for the well, amount? Well, I took two cameras. Okay. The small one that I always have with me, my little small camera, then my bigger camera, a 1,500 pictures. Okay, that's a lot. But you just know some of them are not all winners. I mean, maybe half of them are. So what pictures did you get that just... Well, there, you away. At there, that was the first time I ever saw an Egyptian geese. What is an Egyptian geese? Well, you know, if I had nothing but, if this show was strictly all about photos, which would then, I'd probably lose my, my studio time here with my, <laughs> uh, with my director here. Um, it's just an unusual color. I did a blog about them, okay. and I do blog about okay. this, and now that I've planned this show with you, now I have a so sense Egyptian of direction. So Egyptian geese in... South in, Africa. In South Africa. <laughs> never seen them here. I could do a whole blog just on insects. I mean, I have never seen Did some of the weirdest insects. Did you hear about the Parktown prawns we have? <laughs> no. What is that? I don't know. Oh, it's, it's like a, it's another another story, <laughs> a horror story. Oh God, insect. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about. I want to talk about Johannesburg because that's what okay. So fun. Johannesburg is yeah, it's where I grew up. So you went to Johannesburg, I which did. is the metropolis. It's not yes. as pretty as Cape Town, but tell me what what was your aha moment there? Is there any? It's, it's South Africa. Okay, got, uh, Johannesburg got an energy, and we call we, us insiders. We call that Joburg. Josie. Oh, it's you call Josie. it Josie. Oh, shoot. You, see, she's even more inside than I'm inside, let me just tell you. Or JHB. There you go. <laughs> well, you can't go there and not have a Nelson Mandela moment. No. You can't. No. Um, it doesn't matter where you're from in the world or how you view the world. Um, I would say to anybody that wants to travel, if, you've, if you have sort of a closed mind about how we are as people, step out into the world and you will see in no time how much we are all alike it's so emotional and you know as a president 
coming out of apartheid, one of the few countries that switched from, uh, you know, apartheid to democracy peacefully. Um, he was such a leader and such an inspiration and a, a guide. And there is the Rainbow Nation is truly South Africa. Yes. So you went to the apartheid museum. Oh, we I'm, did. I'm sure. We did. And you went to his, the townships. Yes. And you went to see the Soweto townships. Oh, yes. But I want to tell you one more thing about Nelson Mandela's location. Because we that, that day when I told you it was so windy, we could not ferry over to Robben Island. There oh, was too much wind. So some okay. of the other people did eventually get there. We personally, Shelly and I personally, didn't get there. Don't you find it amazing that this man who is locked away and not allowed to see the world, he went into a cell and instead of coming out with hate, he came out with a message of right. love and peace. He was not just a beacon of light to South Africa. He was a beacon of light and a, a beacon of hope to every to the world. citizen living and walking on planet Earth you and the world today. He was a man amongst men. He was. And so a father. So if, if and I don't know if this display was in place while you were there, but when you walked outside of the museum, there were all these sticks. Red, blue, green, the yellow, Rainbow Nation. So the Rainbow Nation. He changed the flag when he took over um, as president. And because we are the rainbow nation, a nation of people of all colors and all religious beliefs and all. Yeah. The flag was changed to have all the colors. And it's probably one of the most colorful flags in it's the beautiful. world today because it has black, red, white, yellow, green, uh, blue. It, it has all, all the six. colors. You bet. So what happened was when we walked outside, there were these big posters, glass, glass and clay posters, and the writing in the picture was in a color. Then you stepped a little bit farther, that writing, that picture, that was in a different color. And then what you learned is that there were these sticks, like sticks that were probably, I don't know, four feet tall, matching the color of what was written. And you could, as, as the participant in this experience, take a stick and put it into a, a cage of sort and put your stick in that cage so that you making a statement I this oh gosh it was just it was I, I the whole thing was so emotional because you you talk, you mentioned Soweto and I have got to make sure that I give you time about Soweto because that was did you get to go and hear some Sapphire Town jazz oh because you know Sapphire Town or Soweto and the townships have their own form of African jazz and they are some of the most talented musicians and speaking about recyclables they don't have money for high-end instruments no. you know a plastic container or a little oil drum or a tin can become these instruments but playing together in harmony it's it unbelievable can blow you away the drums are like the the drums are the rhythm of africa oh my it's gosh. In, in the beat of the heart of africa is the beat of the rhythm of the drum and then put on some kind of Boot. Oh, and rain then you, boots, gumboot dancing. The dancing. rain. The gumboot dancing. Is that so what that that's comes called? from. So that comes from the boots they used to wear into the mines. There are gumboots that are waterproof for going down into the mines. And they would attach to it little Pepsi and Coke uh, bottle top caps by wire, which would give that shaky, shaky, cymbal -y sound. And then and their gum hands. Boot dancing. And actually the show in Vegas, Stomp, yes, I, is that's based on the African mining dance. Oh, we are not. We are, oh my gosh, we didn't even talk time about this. Flying. Holy cow. What are we, time is flying. Did that, or we, oh my Where gosh. Where is it going? I know. What well, about the, the, the children and the education? Why? How did you feel We're gonna about? Oh my goodness, this is going to be like the fastest break in the world because I've got to tell you about yes. Soweto. I so we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, <laughs> you're going to hear about. This the, needed to be four shows. This needed to be two hours. <laughs> Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and hosts of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Sir Johnny Clegg. <laughs> Oh, 
how does it not come into your heart? I play this song often. So now we're going to hear um, the, the Solemn Salam, that S A L O M E word song. We'll, maybe you'll recognize it. Oh, God. Hi, everybody. Because this is a one-hour show, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with this music, but you can look it up. It's spelled S-A-L-O-M-E. Check it out. I was about to tell you probably the most poignant thing that happened for me personally when we were in Soweto. So this was an organized trip. You know, it wasn't like I was on a vacation. The, the, the class was designed to do things, but part of what we did was cultural, too, in its, in its um, experience. So we went to the Soweto Township and met, as I would tell you, some incredible people, just like I talked about Jill. This is where we met Fulani, Fulani Madano. Fulani Madano started this organization called Clip Town. And I highly recommend that you check them out as well. And if you go to the www.cliptownyouthprogram.or, I'm sorry, org, dot Z-A, you can see a video about this man. And he was inviting us in to watch that dance you've just described. <laughs> it was incredible. We didn't know that was, I didn't know that was going to happen. But to also just experience Soweto. And this is what he said to us. Friends. Please do not bring your pity face into our village. We are not to be pitied. We are happy people. We are joyful people. We are loving people. And while we may not have everything we'd like to have, and yes, we need to go get our water somewhere else, and yes, we may not be living in the most ideal conditions, we are not to be pitied. It was so powerful when he said that because I know me. I know I would have walked in not knowing what I was going to see and thought, oh, God, this is so bad. And that isn't what I found at all. The glass is always overflowing to South African people. The children. Oh, my gosh. The children. Nobody, everybody was playing. Everybody's, everybody sings. Everybody dances. Everybody smiles. Everybody's happy. The dogs bark. They don't care. The children are happy. You know, people, wherever they are, are smiling. How do you not smile back? And now we go into this little room, right? And now they do this dancing, just like you said, just like, like the stomp thing from Las Vegas. But what was so remarkable, that at the time that I was studying about his Clip Town organization, he's, he's received awards. He received, um, in 2012, he was honored by CNN's Top Ten Heroes. Wow. He's a remarkable man wow. because he's been educated. He's from there. He's come he's back, back to his community. There are there were like 400 children there. 23 of them have graduated high school and have gone to university. That's incredible. This is because of his passion. The passion there is just it's just indescribable. But it's across the country because to give you an idea, a friend of mine years ago started a charity called Feed uh -huh. where they provide up now, 5,000 hot lunches to kids in schools every day that otherwise would be going to school on an empty stomach. And they knew food was critical to learning. And it started small, but they deliver 5,000 hot lunches to kids in the townships every single day. And that is a thing. People love to give back to the community. Yes. They make a plan. They are resourceful. Uh -huh. They figure it out. It's pretty remarkable. I, I, I don't know. I want to hear what you think because, you know, in a, in a pyramid of things, there's food and there's culture and there's sights and there's sounds and there's flavors and then there's the people and then there's... What, what if you were to say in South Africa, jumped out and pulled at your heartstrings the most? The people, number one, because wherever we were, the people made a difference. The, whether they were our tour guides or they were working in the hotels or, or whatever, you know... I, I, like I said, I had a camera. 
It was everywhere. And it's like, what's that part? What's that part? What's this part? That, you know, it's like, oh, let's be Facebook friends. Oh, I got Facebook friends all over. Chucks. Oh, my God. Don't start me on the Chucks. If we have time, we'll talk about my shoes <laughs> at the end of the show, how I got my first. I'm wearing the Chucks I bought from this guy on the street. But I've got to the tell people. you, the people, yes. And then next. Well, my other question is when people hear South Africa, they hear safari. Exactly. They hear game drive, safari, animals. So did you get to go on a safari? Yes. You oh did? Oh, my God. And tell me. Okay, so they called them. You game get to do a night drive, too? We start our first, our first game drive was at night. In the pitch. Pitch darkness. <laughs> it was dusk as it started. We were not two seconds into this ride, <laughs> and an elephant is walking. I thought, did what? you like arrange for that? He said, no, this just happens. This is where we are. We're going to stop photo op, right? And it's continuing to get dark. There are nine people in this Jeep. We're in, we're in staggered levels. You can see it's open-ended. You got your cameras. You're good to go. So we're driving, and then we see. You oops. must have been heaven. Oh, God. I was just going crazy. So we're driving, and we see the giraffes. We, we, and I've learned about what the Big Five is, because everybody's talking about yes. the Big Five. What the heck's the Big Five? So you know we, why they're called the Big Five? They're called the Big Five because they were the most dangerous animals to hunt on foot. That is correct. It's not who's the biggest. That's the it's truth. It's not even, it's just who's the most difficult. So and the, actually, the most dangerous is the elephant. Well, so here's the Big Five. The lion, the elephant, the buffalo, the leopard, and the rhino. We saw everyone... But the leopard. Evidently, the leopards were being seen at Kruger National. Okay. We were not at Kruger. Okay. But we were at Pilonsburg. That's pretty good to yeah. see all four. Right. Did you get to Pilonsburg? Yes, right. That's did you get we... to see a kill? <gasps> yes. You oh did? My God. Like a live kill? A live kill. Well, M Marsha, I'm going to tell you that that is super rare because sometimes you'll get lucky enough to be in the game reserve and pull up alongside the road and you'll get to see some the of the aftermath. animals feeding the, on the carcass as the aftermath. But to actually see it in hot pursuit, who was chasing who? Okay, so here's what happened. And it was getting dark now. Now our guide has a floodlight because it's dark yes. out, right? It's not, we're not at Disney World. No, anyway. in fact, you know the bush is alive and you, <laughs> you see these white eyes and you don't know if it belongs to a squirrel <laughs> or to a lion. Exactly. It's like moving. Well, there's a wildebeest, and which is also a gnu. Wildebeest, yes. It's, and they're, they look like a big buffalo. Yes. They're big. They have these massive horns. They're not a particularly attractive, but they're big. Yes. All of a sudden, Humble. huge. All of a sudden, a lioness has come out of we don't know where, and she has attached herself underneath this animal. Her arms are at the neck. Her feet are wrapped underneath the carcass. She's coming from... She, she is now... Got the, she's going she's, for the neck. She's gone for the neck. She's gone for the blood. It's one of those, I can't look, I gotta look, I can't, I was on the other side of the Jeep, everybody was videotaping this. You can hear it. You can hear, oh my the God. Bone you snap. Can, you can hear the bone snap. You can hear the bone snap. You could hear, you could see the blood. You could see that this thing is trying to, this beast is trying to get this damn thing off his body. But it's body. a cycle of life. And that the truth of the matter is that if nature were left that way, you know, the body would feed the next and decompose. And it, it is. It's like the Lion King moment. It's a circle of life. Exactly. They're left in their natural habitat. Exactly. Animals feed and the hunters and the hunted and then become, you know. So this is what happened now. It doesn't stop there. That isn't the end of the story. The, f the pride come, the pack come. No, another lion comes running from the from the right side of this beast, and now it has jumped on the hind end because they hunt in packs. The pride. What? So there she was. So now there's two of them. It's like holy cow! It I wouldn't be surprised if the entire pack of lions were probably were there because they hunt like that, and the males don't hunt. Oh, they're just yeah. They that's only hunt girls when they're don't. trying to woo the woman. The woman, exactly. Well, you know that's. We could, we could relate that, but we're going to just leave that. But so, so to finish the thought, the next morning, well, so we moved so that other people could see. The next morning, we went from the, the night drive to the, to the early morning drive, went back to the same location. That's where we saw the male. And the whole pack the were there pack, feeding. The babies, everybody's feeding. Oh, it was just unbelievable. And now tell me, what else did you get to see there? Uh, okay. You know, I, I know you went on, uh, you know, I, I, I know you went to Botswana as yeah. well. Yes, and, I, we and, did. And, I held a gazillion dollars worth of diamonds from De Beers. You did? Yes. Uh -huh. you cannot the blood diamonds. You cannot go in there chewing gum. No. Really? Oh, because you can. Oh, that is hysterical. So before we went in, they were passing a cup around. That is so funny. I never if even thought of that. If you have gum, please <laughs> take it out. Now it's like, what are they talking? Why can't you chew gum in here? It's like, uh, hello. It's like, oh, my God. So I know. Yes, you met the that. ambassador. The U.S. Oh, ambassador. Uh, so that's, that's a funny story. So. Um, we, we, we met the U.S. ambassador. His name is Earl Miller. All okay. Right? 
So we walk into his home. This is a, we, are, we were not the only ones invited to this event. We walk into his home. You get to go and meet the ambassador. Uh, well, Marsha, you're very connected. Uh, why not? <laughs> anyway, so we walk into his home, right? There's this, I don't know what he looks like. There's this man standing in this foyer watching CNN. A lot of things were going on around the time I was in okay. Africa. And this guy's, tall guy, he's watching it. And I went, he goes, hi, I'm Earl. I want to say, I want to say Earl Shy. By me, that's like, hi, I'm Earl. I said, hi, I'm Marsha. It's like, oh, hi. He said, I'm the ambassador. I said, oh, well, this is my friend Shelly. It's like, I'm not an ambassador, but hey, nice to meet you. And so, you know me. No airs and graces. It's great, right? Well, so you know me. I don't stop there. Why would I stop there? Well, where are you from? I don't know. He says, um, Flint, Michigan. I said, no. Now you have to understand this is March. This is basketball time. You know, besides the birds, the bees, the flowers, the trees, I love basketball. This is March Madness. My teams are in. My teams aren't in. Blah, blah, blah. Now we're talking basketball. I'm just, you were just like shooting the breeze. Where are you from? Where'd you go to school? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, it's really nice to see you. Let's take a picture. Goodbye. So that was pretty cool. That's fantastic. And then you also got to go to Gaborone and Zen. Yes. Yeah, we, 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 so, yes, we did. So that was when we were in Gaborone. So I, I, and I, that's the capital. I, I, that was a very interesting experience to be there as well. You and saw the falls? So then, no, this is, that's not where we saw the falls. So what happened was, after, oh, well, I have to tell you one more story. Yes. I have, there's one more story. We went to a cultural village. It was the last day of the class time. And we went, and I don't know how to say it. Maybe you know how to say it. It's B-A-H-U-R-U-S-T-S-H-E. I don't know how to say I that. Have Bob no Bob Barusta? Well, anyway. Barusta. Well, this was a woman. They, they uh, would, were showing you culture. So there was a lot of dancing, as you would imagine, which you see a lot of there. And then she told a story about how, a marriage proposal happens and how a wedding happens and how the wedding happens and what's supposed to be appropriate after the wedding and how the aunties are outside the window and then they want to make sure that everything's happened properly and if things don't look right in those bed sheets then maybe you didn't get who you were supposed to get and then maybe you're new wife has been shunned and maybe you're going to be divorced. Anyway, it was very interesting. The, that's a very cultural thing and yes. also, uh, you know, you pay b for for the w marriage, you have to mm -hmm. donate Dowry. a couple of yeah, yes, cows exactly. and whatever. She talked about but that. But South Africa has become a little more new age. Right. <laughs> that she was definitely <laughs> taught definitely in the old days. This is definitely part of history. A and that was, uh, exactly. South Africans today, you see intermarriage across uh, Tribes across right. colors across it's it's become much more of an intermixed rainbow nation where right. everyone it, loves everybody. Well, so it's a perfect thing what you just said, right? So this was historic. So I'm looking at this lady and I'm trying to figure out how old she is because they're singing and doing all these things. So now we're going to eat. We're having a delicious meal, and I, we were taking a bit. Well, how do you think she is? I don't know. How do you think she is? Well, anyway, this woman was like I don't know, 75 or 80. I can't even remember now. She just looked fabulous. And now I want to take a picture of her. And then I'm asking her for her name. Okay, so she spells it. And it's spelled. I want to spell it. Her first name is spelled M-M-A-N-K-U-D-U, -U, right? Mkudu. Okay, so now she's writing her last name. And she's doing this on a napkin, right? Okay. So she writes the letter G. Then she writes the letter L. Then she writes the letter I. Then she writes the letter C. And I'm watching her. When she wrote the K and she continued to write, I said, Glickman? <laughs> Glickman? Seriously? <laughs> now, I got to tell you. I said, It's the Rainbow Nation. You got to love it. It's beautiful. I said, Are you Jewish? She said, Well, not exactly. <laughs> but I was married to the chief's son, and I told my father, This ain't working for me. I want an education. I don't want to live with this guy. I want a divorce. I'm out. She was a rebel before her time. And I will tell you that um, the people in South Africa uh, that came from the apartheid era, the generation to follow them, which uh, have followed them, education is very important to them as a result that they were not allowed to study, mm -hmm. that you will find that most most of the next generation were all about university degrees and studying and really diligent students. Education to them is what they hold as one of the most rich mm -hmm. gifts and treasures that they could, you know, own. And they're really, really diligent students. 
It's really interesting because you always saw children walking with school uniforms. With so this woman was unbelievable. So not only did she get divorced, not only did she get educated, she went to Israel. Okay. That's where she met the professor <laughs> that became her husband. Okay. And then they came back. And she set up this and cultural she has a village. village and a lodge. And she set it up like a kibbutz. And, and, and everybody's, I don't care who you spoke to, whether it was men or women, they all universally said Africa is women. Women, strong women. It's a, it's a female country. They believe that they hold such regard for women. I just, that, that was remarkable. So this lady, she was, she was just unbelievable. Okay, so there, there's that. Now the class time is over. Now Shelly and I and the other, the other four people, now we're on our way. Now we're on a jet plane again. And now we're going to Zimbabwe. Because what are we going to do? She's off the clock. Now we're going to play. Thank you to Robin and Stella. They set up this fabulous lodge for us. You got the mosquito nets. God forbid you should get a mosquito of course. bite, you know, and, and there are the mosquitoes all yes, big they're there. They're like the size of a 747, <laughs> exactly. so you don't, you know, you can see them. <laughs> and we are there for the sole purpose of going to Victoria Falls. Oh, now, Victoria Falls. I have not been. Oh, well, you need to put that on your list. It is volume-wise the and tallest The wise, biggest. The biggest. Be, and Niagara. One of the seven wonders of the world. I didn't know that it's one of the seven wonders yes. of the world. It's so loud. Powerful. And we were there when the water level was very high. So when you take the walking tour, you have to put on, I mean, I had to protect my camera. You have to put a rain, a rain gear yeah. on because you're going to get wet from the spray. And even though our lodge was not on that river, the Zimbazi. Mm -hmm. Zimbali. Zimbali. Zimbali? Zimbali? What's the name of the river? What's the name of the river? I come so crazy. Zambezi. Zambezi, the Zambezi River. Totally There's all these Z's. <laughs> There's Z's, Z's, Z's are all over the place. Because um, um, Zimbabwe's on one side and Zambia's on the other side. There's just Z's everywhere in this place. Um, and zebras. And zebras. Oh my God, the zebras. The, oh, the animals. Aren't they are amazing? I, I just, I, I, the photo opportunities. So we, we went to the falls and then we went to the, the Chobe. So now we're really in Zimbabwe, but now we've taken it, it, it. You know, it's just like crossing over. You just now you're in another country. Suddenly, you go through customs. You show your whatever and your visa, and off you go. And now we're back in Botswana, where the Chobe River is. And we took an evening, an evening um, a sunset cruise. Oh yes. So we drank sundowners. Oh God. South Africans call it sundowners. Oh my God. So, and marula, I'm hoping. Oh my gosh, yes. And marula cream. <laughs> oh, it's just so good. Over ice. I, I'm, I'm, I'm there. And, and, but I also like their beer, Crystal. I drank a lot of Crystal beer. I have beer. not had Crystal. Oh yeah, that was good too. And of course, we study the wine industry, so we're talking Pentatage. Uh, you know, course. that's what these folks are studying. They're talking all about wine. Oh my God. You know, truly, this could be a two-hour show. I have to blog about this at some point. <laughs> you do. But, but the, the, the falls was were spectacular. I have a couple of friends that have bungee jumped off it, if you can believe that. No, I cannot believe that. They I, have. I don't have that kind of uh, I, well, fear I'm petrified of heights. I don't even think I'd get to the edge of it. Right. But I've it is it is quite it is quite high. Wow. But it, it is and it's so powerful and and the, the um we went to a what do they call that? Doma? Wait, what it, no, what is the thing where you the oh oh shoot I don't know I don't even have it in my notes but the last night that we went there we went to a, a place where people were having um, a dinner and and dancing and um, and that was um, I don't remember where because South Africans no. drink and dance and eat a lot so it's probably just pretty and you know much what else was really interesting like that <laughs> everyone seemed to have a cell phone everyone seemed to be connected you, you know it's, it's funny that you say that because when i first moved to the states and that's a good 20 years ago when i first came people would be like did you ride to an elephant on school and like are there white people in south africa yeah, are there and white that's, people that's, that's i got the asked question. that 20 years ago but the truth of the matter is You'll be surprised if you visit South Africa. It's a it's a first world city with malls that have all the stores that you can yeah. find in the U.S. and cars and traffic and freeways and technology and cell phones and and the best part for me about it is uh, that South Africans really have a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, they laugh at themselves a lot. They laugh <laughs> at life a lot. And they're very welcoming and hospitable. You come into their country and they want you to be there. They want to welcome you into their home and their hearts and their life. And they want to share their energy mm -hmm. with you. I, I, I feel the rhythms and the beat of Africa wherever in the world I go.
It's the truth. And we, we went to a, a place where there were innovators there and entrepreneurs. And there was a man there that's come up with a design to help the deaf with solar powered um, uh, product where you can put it out in the sun and you can charge your um, hearing aids. I can believe that. The first heart transplant in the world was given by a South African, actually. Uh, what, uh, the, with Chris the, Barnard. Yeah, with, with Baboon, right? Um, yeah, and and I think human transplant right, as well. Right, exactly. But Chris Barnard was right. the doctor that did the first American open heart surgery. Um, you couldn't. So they were there, uh, and that's what what I say is, uh, you know, it to this generation of South Africans now, education is 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 key. These are not kids that you have to force into college or grades. These are kids that want to be doctors and nurses and 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 lawyers and accountants and engineers and architects, and they want to to they want to to study and make mm -hmm. the world a better place. They're learned people, always always noses in books. <laughs> what it's, I found, it's crazy. What I found so interesting is I don't know what I expected, uh, that everyone spoke English. I don't know why I didn't think that was going to be the case. They don't just speak English. The one guy that took us on the tour over to Chobe, 11 languages. Yes. Japanese, Ch not just well, wow. Japanese. I, when, he, when he started speaking Japanese to somebody because they looked lost, Shelly and I just looked at him like, are you kidding? <laughs> yes, th because tourism is a big deal there too. It is, and English is their first language, but there are so many tribal languages that they actually, in order for the people from the different townships to be able to speak to each other, they have a language called Sotsital, which is the street language. So it's a mixture of all of the languages across South Africa, and it is the language spoken on the streets. It's so interesting. And you tried, I'm hoping, some biltong there. Yes, the that's, that's like the jerky. The dried yes, jerky. Yes, uh -huh. We did that on that on a game drive. Oh, like, that was kind of a weird. Fantastic. That's so good. It, you know, and I don't go anywhere, anywhere where I don't run into somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. That's what happens. So <laughs> we're, a, we're, we're having true. breakfast, right? And this man is wearing a Botswana shirt, and I'm hearing him order his eggs, and I went, are you from New Orleans? And he said, no. And I said, oh, well, you're, you're, I sort of detected an accent. He said, no, I'm from California. I said, I'm from California. <laughs> I said, really? He, he said, he's, I said, well, why are, he said, why are you here? Why are you here? You know? And he said, well, I was, I'm retired LAPD. And I said, you are? Do Is you know? he there working or traveling? Said, yeah, no, he's there working. I said, do you know Edgar Palmer? Of course I know Edgar Palmer. Why wouldn't he? Anyway, well, I know Edgar Palmer. I, you know Edgar Palmer. Okay, so now we're, we're in Botswana, all right? Okay, now we know this person, right? So now we're, I'm telling him about what I'm doing, and I, you know, I have a radio show, blah, blah, blah. I don't shut up. You know me, born to talk, I don't shut up. And next thing we know, it's like, well, I, don't, I, live, I live in Los Angeles, but really I live in Westchester. He says, oh, I live in View Park. My, my kids went to Westchester. It's a small world. I said, oh, I went to Westchester. My kids went to Westchester. I want to know. So it takes like 30 hours to get there, which no one ever tells you about how far it is. Yeah, how fine. did you handle the jet lag? And, you know, I, I would say to anyone wanting to go to South Africa, it's not one of those places you want to hop into for a week. You went for 21 days. Yes. And you need that time you because do. you've got the 30 hours of travel plus the jet lag plus the travel back plus the jet lag. So you're losing roughly three, four days. So it, this is a trip if you're going to take. You need to go for two to three weeks. You do. do. You, you can't do. hop in and out. And so guess what I did? So it didn't take us quite 30 to get there. We went LA to Heathrow, Heathrow to Joburg, Joburg to Cape Town. That's about 30 hours. So it was a two, two levens, two <laughs> levens, missed a flight uh, going into to Cape Town. That was a hassle. We got it fixed. Coming home, we went from Botswana, um, we went to Zimbabwe to Joburg, to home. Heathrow, to home. It's still. It's forever. With the layovers, it's, it's. So guess what we did? Guess what I did? Yes. So we got home on a Tuesday night, 30 hours of travel. And on Friday of that same week, I flew to Tucson because I had tickets to go to the final four with my son and my future daughter-in-law that's getting married this coming weekend. Are you excited about it? Yes, that? I'm excited. I'm the, I'm uh, going to, uh, yes. Congratulations. David Eva, yes, I'm very excited about so this. So fabulous. It is so fabulous. But is smiling right he now. He is smiling. He, he is. He's going to be there with the picture. Have you been involved in any of the preparations or are you the, just kind okay, of... Okay, now this is, this is the Jewish in me. Oy vey. Oy vey. Oy vey, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been 
I've been in, I've been involved. I'm honestly I'm the only surviving parent. <gasps> So she, oh, her you, uh, mother passed away, uh, her, and so she's going to walk in with her brother, and a picture of her mom. I'm going to walk in with uh, Dave and a picture of Butch. I know, uh, but we're bringing them to the party. And let me tell uh, you, this these are U of A people. You can't even imagine what kind of a party this is going to be. You're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate. And they're going to be celebrating with you. You bet they are. It's going to they be are. it's going to be wonderful. But the opportunity. I have I have been so jammed up since I've been home from my trip. There wasn't really time for the jet lag because, you know, I do this every week. I you know, I you know, you've been my guest. You got to plan, you got to get ready. And uh and so I, I have been kind of busy. I haven't really had the opportunity to to truly digest the what trip. this trip was all about. I do a word of the day every day on my Facebook page. Marsha Berger B E R G H E R Y T E K A. And while I was gone, I thought, how am I going to do that? We're nine hours apart. I don't have, you know, the tech that I don't Time have. The, yeah, and the tech. I mean, I'm not sitting in front of a computer all day. There's just Wi-Fi when I'm in the hotel. So and terrible internet in South Africa. Terrible. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> was bad. So I did a picture of the day. So I would find pictures uh. that I would put up and just say something about that picture, that that my, minor bird with a, with a grasshopper in its mouth. or. Did you he see the hardy dogs? What is that? So it's this massive bird that's very, very big, not scared of people. It's kind of the size of about a peacock minus the tail. And it comes onto the grass and it goes, ah, -da, ah, -da, and it's it very loud. And you can chew it away because it starts at about five in the morning and you're oh, thinking, I just want to sleep. And the three or four of them gang up on you in your garden and you're like, shoo, shoo. And you can run after it. It's not at all, all. Um, affected by you, but it gets its name from like that hardy da, hardy da, and it. Oh my goodness, they're big and noisy. <laughs> I don't. I saw. Do they have a very very? They're long brown. They're not very pretty looking what's birds. The, what's their beak look like? Yeah, kind it's of like a hook beak. Like a, the, yes. yes, I did. I I yes. did see that. And they're noisy. Oh they're man, they're noisy. So they're not. They're not everybody's popular little. <laughs> well, they come into the garden and they wake you up. It's kind of like South Africa's version of a rooster. Exactly. It sounds like, oh, that's so funny. When was the last time you were there? Were you there for, for your mom? I w went back four times last year. I went back, yeah, four times. Right. So they were not uh, social visits. Right. They were, I went to see my mom. But you were born and raised there. I was born and raised there, and I carry South Africa in my heart. I'm, Certainly. I'm South African to my core. Uh, Africa is something that's born inside me. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere I go. It goes with me, the beat and the rhythm of Africa. How does your daughter um, feel about it when she, she goes? She's so familiar with the foods and the cultures. She know, mocks my husband and I all the time about, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the the way we say things. And she loves some, so much of the food. And, you know, she's born in the States, but with two South African parents, there's a lot of South Africanisms and, in terms of her culture. A thing that we do, which which South Africans do, I'm sure you see, they sit down for meals and they enjoy family and they enjoy mm -hmm. community very much like the Europeans. They slow down and they come together. The people make them rich, not so much the things. It's, 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 it's the people in your life and your family that make you wealthy. Mm -hmm. You have many kids or you have many friends or family that make you wealthy, not necessarily uh, items that can be purchased with a uh, a monetary value. And that's how you live your lifestyle now. That's how your that whole is. cooking, right? I mean, you have people come into your home and you just, nothing Dinner gives, time. you just. Dinner, feeding people, open home. Uh, yes, it's very much the South African way. It's a, it's a community. You, I have to tell you, it, I don't know if you, you might not have seen the show that I did with Melissa, but <laughs> if you've got to go to her website, the it's www.melissamayo.com. And and she's so <laughs> colorful, and her food is so beautiful. Oh, I mean, thank it's you, Marsha. Physically, so beautiful. Well, to you look eat at. with your eyes, right? So you well, have you got to you eat have to start there, first. right? Eating and, the rainbow, and then you don't just stop there. Oh no, you should. This woman is strong. You're a <laughs> yogi. Oh my goodness! So do you work out every day? Um, if not yoga, some time in the pool, a walk around the neighborhood, uh, more for my mind. I like to exercise as get... a way to, I'm a high energy person and I find really? when I work out, <laughs> exactly, when I work out, um, I get quiet. And uh -huh. so it's my meditation. How long do you spend doing that? Uh, about an hour a day, either a walk or a yoga class or something quiet. Mm -hmm. I like to, to slow it down. Nothing mm -hmm. 
frantic. Right. Definitely nothing frantic. Right. But yeah, I mean, I have this body. As we get one, we get one temple. What we put into it and how we treat it mm -hmm. is what we get out of it. So, I mean, I, I've got a high schooler now. She's going to be a high schooler. And, you know, before I know it, I'm going to be a grandmother. The goal is to be strong. And, you know, you mm -hmm. please God, you'll be grandmother. Your yeah. goal is to be strong to be able to keep up with the grandkids down the line. So I look at my body as something I want to take care of. Oh, that's great. Wow. But Marsha, I wish I had been there in South Africa with you to experience it through your eyes. I feel no like kidding. you've given us a taste and uh, I, 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 just your pictures and, and, and the stories and the people, I'm sure you impacted them just as much as they impacted you. I, I'm, I'm sure you left your mark on oh, South Africa. Oh, thank you. Well, this hour just flew by. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you'll consider the possibility of going there and experiencing Africa through your lens. And I guess I'm now inspired to write some blogs and really yes. pull out some of those 1,500 pictures into some 1,500, I want to see even them. I want to see. Even if it's 300, right? I want to see them, and especially the Egyptian goose. I want to see oh, that. there you go. And the kill, if you got any of those oh, photos. I'm sure your audience would be interested in well, seeing all the big five and the safari pictures. Thank you. Cape Town, Table Mountain, and these amazing people that you've mentioned in the broadcast. Thank you. And thanks, Shelley. I don't know where we're going to go next year, but I'm ready when you are. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. And happy 4th of July to you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to L.A. Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network, original reality radio and crafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Stay tuned.